What's up everyone? Thanks for tuning into my channel. I just want to make this video and uh, talk about uh, you know miles per gallon on the Mark 7 GTI and basically any ICE uh, GTI. ICE stands for Internal Combustion Engine, ICE. I just want to you know mention how miles per gallon is going with this car. I currently have let's see I am at 159,367 miles on this car right now um, I basically do all the work myself it is tuned it's IS38 it's modified blah 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 right now I'm on a road trip going from Oracle Arizona and I went through Phoenix and I'm traveling home to San Diego that's where I'm from I just see some people and some friends and hang out and go to the beach all that fun stuff but, uh, you know, I've been cruising at a speed between, I would say, my average speed right now is, is probably 63 to 64 miles per hour. So I've been fluctuating between 60 and 67. I think 68 is the highest that I've gone, but I'm set on cruise at 65 right now. And uh, I'm getting really good gas mileage. So I just wanted to show you some things going on. And I wanted to talk about the, the new EV Golf. I don't know if it's coming to the United States, but I know it's going to Europe. And uh, it, there's some videos out there on YouTube right now about it. And so I just wanted to mention some things that I'm curious about it, maybe uh, the things that I like, uh, and some of my concerns uh, with that going forward with VW. So uh, let's get to this. I will show you where I'm at right now with my miles and my miles per gallon and stuff like that. And then uh, I'll talk about this a little bit later in the video. All right, so I've been going through Phoenix traffic, which is just swell, just swell, guys. We got people going like a few miles per hour under the speed limit in the second to fastest lane, just causing traffic, just causing traffic, love it. But anyways, just wanted to show you where I'm at with my mileage. I'm heading to California right now to San Diego going back home I'm currently on this tank of gas I have gone a hundred and sixteen point seven miles and this is what my miles per gallon uh, indicator is showing I know that's not 100% accurate so when I do fill up <clears throat> I'm gonna do the calculation myself I'm gonna get out of the fast lane here now have some room um, I basically set myself around 60 to 65 miles per hour depending on clumps of traffic and stuff like that um, but I wanted to show you too right there on the gas gauge um, I've barely 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 uh, gone or used a, a little bit of gas so I haven't even used an eighth of a tank of gas yet now I'm going on 117.5 miles this is a manual transmission. So I just wanted to show you uh, what this car can get. Um, I have, this has shown 41.8 um, at the max that I've seen so far on this trip. Yeah, so uh, just showing you, this is getting really good gas mileage. It's still climbing barely right now. Um, so I will do the calculation when I fill up, but I am going to assume it's gonna be close to 40, uh, maybe a little less, maybe a little more not really sure at this point but we will see I will update you when I get to probably a quarter of a tank of gas being used and I'll show you the mileage and what my miles show on the, the screen there all right quick updates I've gone 180.7 miles I have currently used a quarter tank of gas and my economy trip computer has dropped to 39.1 miles per gallon we all know like I said before that's not accurate so I will be calculating it with the with the calculator when I fill up for gas right now I currently have 249 miles to my destination if we go to the trip computer right here scroll down a little bit 
my range is 345 miles on this take of guess. This is the only take of guess I've I've uh, gone on this trip. So with a range of 345, which we know is not 100% accurate, but it's decently accurate, give or take, you know, 20, 30 miles. So let's say even if I had a 300 mile range left on this tank of gas, and I have 249 miles to go, I will be able to make it to my destination on this one tank of gas. Basically from Oracle, Arizona, which is near Tucson, Arizona, all the way to Menifee, California, where I will be staying at a buddy's of mine. I could make it all the way to Oceanside if I really want to, which is in San Diego County, on this one ticket gas. Now, I'm obviously going to fill up before I hit the state of California because the gas price is majorly different here in Arizona compared to California. It's probably a good $1.50 to $2 difference per gallon, which is ridiculous. So I'm definitely filling up in Arizona before I cross over the state line, but I just wanted to update you on where I'm sitting at currently on this drive. I will update you uh, when I get closer to the half tank mark or the 250 mile mark. All right, guys, so I just stopped to fill up. <clears throat> Um, I got 239.8 miles out of whatever I drove, and I filled up <clears throat> 6.346 gallons, and that comes to 37.79, so 37.79 miles per gallon. The odometer, the triple odometer says 38.9, so it's about, you know, one mile per gallon off, which is not bad, really. That's, that's decently accurate. So 37.79 miles per gallon is what I got. That's pretty good. I would say that's pretty dang good. And I was going average, you know, 62 to 64, 65 miles per hour the whole time. There were some hills, there was some traffic, but most of that was just pretty free flowing. So as you can see, I'm getting really good gas mileage with this car. I am just like blown away how good of gas mileage this car gets, especially being modified. I mean, I've never dynoed this car before, but my butt dyno says it's at least 350 wheel horsepower. I would even probably put it closer to 370 wheel horsepower the way that it's sitting right now. You know, give or take some even from there. Um, it's quick. And yes, when I'm getting on it, I don't get the, the gas mileage that I'm getting currently right now. But when I'm taking a road trip like I am right now, and I'm going through traffic through Phoenix and stuff like that, I've even gone through some small little towns where the speed limit was 35 on this current tank of gas. So this hasn't only been freeway, um, but like I said, I am averaging probably around 62 to 64 miles per hour right now, and I have it set mostly at 65 miles per hour. And I know that my miles per hour is also up to date and current, so it is, it is the exact miles per hour that it shows on my car. Um, that I am traveling. So with all that being said, I mean, I'm just blown away with it being tuned with all the modifications that it has, all the suspension parts, the summer tires, the Firestone Firehawk Indy 500 tires on it. Um, I, I'm just blown away how good a gas mileage this thing gets. When I first bought this car in 2017, brand new, um, I took a road trip about two weeks after I bought it from Utah to Arizona. So in that drive, there's freeway, there's mountainous areas, there's small towns, there's all sorts of stuff, windy roads that you have to take. And on that trip, I remember that when I went to my first fill up, I got 40, it was just over 42 miles per gallon. Much higher than the rated miles per gallon 
that the manufacturer rates it at. And so I was just blown away. I was like, wow, this car is really good, really good on, on gas. Like I was just blown away. And then I started modding it and stuff, but I didn't really see that my miles per gallon dropped much. And so I was just like, this is just nuts. Like we would go every single Sunday up a canyon we would choose a canyon in the area when I lived in Utah, my buddies and I, and we would go for a drive that would probably take between four to five hours. Every single Sunday we would do this. And I mean, we were, a lot of it, we were stuck behind traffic and stuff. So, you know, we weren't getting on it as much as we would like, but I was still getting really good miles per gallon, even driving decently aggressive through these canyons in Utah. All right, so I'm just gonna hold it like this and just pay attention because that sun is just, that's a no point out on the sun, guys. Let me uh, adjust this right here. See my face a little better. There we go. Now I'll pay attention to the road, so I'll be staring this way more. But yeah, so, you know, I was still getting really good gas mileage, <clears throat> even doing those. And, you know, I was a little bit modded at the time. I was stage two, I was 20. Now I am custom tuned with water meth injection and IS-38 with pretty much everything else full bolt-on besides fueling. I don't have any fueling upgrades in this car yet. Um, and man, I'm still getting like 40 to 41 miles per gallon. So this is crazy. So I just wanted to not really pay attention to like miles per gallon per mods. That's not what I want to make this video about. I wanted to make it more about like comparing the ICE vehicles. Like I said, ICE stands for internal combustion engine vehicles. So gasoline vehicles. All right. I want to compare ICE vehicles to EV. And the reason why I want to do this is because I know the EV GTI is coming out or the EV Golf. I, I think it's called the ID3 or something like that. Don't quote me on it. If it's if that's not it, don't quote me on it, but it's close to that. ID2, ID3, something like that. But it's based, they're basically making a GTI version of it. And I have a lot of positive things to say about it, but I'm also concerned about some other things. So let's talk about that right now. Let's talk about some of the things that I really like about the EV GTI coming up. Um, I really, really, really like the design of it. I think it's so cool. Man, I mean, it just looks so good. The wide body fender straight from the factory. Those wheels look amazing. Now, we don't know if they're gonna be the factory wheels, but I really hope they are because they look so good on that design. I really like the futuristic look from all the little tiny angles of it. It's, it's a pretty aggressive looking car. Uh, it's still compact. So they haven't really uh, made it like bigger. And, it, and I'm sure it's gonna be heavier than, than the ICE GTIs that we have right now. But uh, they haven't really made the wheelbase bigger. So it's still gonna feel small, which is the great thing about a hot hatch, right? Um, uh, so that's cool. Uh, I really like the interior. I like it better than the Mark 8. Now, it, it's all gonna depend on if they have haptic touch buttons and how that's all integrated. So I don't really know how I'm gonna like that because there's not many, like, talk, there's not much talk about the interior because nobody has really seen it that much. They've just seen pictures. But from the pictures that I've seen, it, it looks really cool. Um, the exterior design, I love the rear. The rear end looks so good. The tail lights, the front end looks good. Everything looks super aggressive and exactly like I would like to see an EV GTI be. Uh, aggressive looking, sporty, fun, because they need to make up for a lot of the sportiness and the fun factor when, when you're getting an EV. If you're gonna bring the GTI name into an EV, uh-oh, oh snap, that guy's going like 100 and some dude going like 60, just pulled right in front of him in the fast lane. wow. That could have been bad, that could have been bad. Um, anyways, so <clears throat> they really need to 
give the buyer that emotional connection. And I think they killed that with the design. I, and when I mean when I say killed, I mean like that in a good way. They they killed it. Like the design looks really good. So <clears throat> that's gonna create that emotional connection with the buyer because knowing it's gonna be heavier, knowing there's so many other things that aren't going to be as good as the ice version. So those are the great things that I love about it. The concerns that I have with it are that it's an EV. Um, so when I say that, I mean three things. It's gonna be heavy, but that's, that's a given, you know, that's really a given. So, I mean, it can't really be that big of a complaint because that's just the way that it's going. So that's not a huge complaint of mine, but it does suck that it's gonna be heavier than what we have currently. Um, my two big, biggest complaints are range and price. So, we don't know anything about the range. We don't really know anything about the specs or anything. We don't know how much it's gonna cost. But there's no way it's gonna be cheaper than what we what we currently have with the Mark 8. And the Mark 8s aren't that cheap anymore. I mean, starting at, what, $31,000 and going up to $40,000 for a GTI in the Mark 8, and then the Golf R with the all-wheel drive, slightly bigger turbo, I mean, you're looking in the 50s right now. That's a lot of money, so it's not cheap. So when the EV comes out, you're going to be paying at least the same, most likely more. And that sucks because the performance that you're going to get with it is not going to be able to compare with the ICE GTIs that we have. My next complaint is the range. Um, we don't know what the range is going to be, but there has been speculation saying that the range will probably be around 250 miles. As you can tell, with what I showed you, with the miles that I'm getting on a one tank of gas right now, 250 miles, I'm not even using close to a half a tank of gas currently, all right? This car is gonna be able to go, if I kept it at this speed and there, I didn't hit traffic or anything like that, I'm gonna be able to do 500 miles with one tank of gas, all right? And currently in my area, the gas is 4, 4.19 the gallon. So from full to empty, it's gonna cost me around 50 bucks. Let's just say it's gonna cost me 50 bucks at the current rate that it's at right now. Okay, so within 250 miles, I haven't even used $25 worth of gas. That's, that's not that much, all right? So, but the benefit of the, of the ICE car or the, the gasoline GTI is that I can go another 250 miles. I can go 500 total on a road trip if the conditions were exactly the same, meaning it's 91 degrees Fahrenheit right now. I'm cruising at 65 miles per hour. So my average speed is about 62 to 64 miles per hour around there and 91 degrees Fahrenheit outside, cruising on a road trip, mostly freeway, getting probably four, let's say I'm just around 40 miles per gallon right now. That, that's really good. And I could go 500 miles. If it has a range of 250 miles max, you're not gonna get that range. You just aren't. That is not a practical range. That's like best, best, best case scenario range, okay? So with the current speed, 65, let's say, I'm, let's just say I'm averaging 65 miles per hour. If I set it at 65 on an EV GTI, it was, and it was 91 degrees Fahrenheit outside, and I was on a road trip with no traffic around me or anything like that, just cruising, I'm probably going to get around 200 miles out of that team. Maybe 230, but safely 200. I mean, 
at 200 miles, I'm not even using a half a tank of gas on my ICE vehicle right now, on my current GTI. So if I was in my EV GTI at 200 miles that I know I'm going to get, I also have to be thinking ahead. I'm like, where is the next charging station? And is it working? <laughs> That's another issue, right? Are the charging stations that are built and available, are they working? Because a lot of them aren't working. If you watch other people and their issues with charging and stuff like that. So, so let's say I'm in my EV GTI, I've already done 120 miles. I have to be thinking, where is the next station to charge at? And if that next station is 50 miles away, and then the one after that is gonna be another 150 miles away or 100 miles, I have to charge at the one closest to me, 50 miles away. So that means even though I could I could get 200 miles of range out of one full charge or 230 max maybe I'm still going to have to find something between 120 150 miles of range of use so that I don't use the battery to the very very lowest and possibly get stuck it's like running out of gas right you don't want to you don't want to push your gas tank to the very last drop to where you run out of gas on the road you have to plan ahead but the difference is there are a lot more gas stations available to us so even within like you know if you if you've done a road trip before on a certain route you kind of know where the where the gas stations gas stations are going to be located so you're pretty good within 30 miles of each other knowing that there's going to be another gas station that's not the case with ev charging stations a lot of them are spread out because there's just not that many so they're like spread out between 100 sometimes even more than 100 miles and that's that's a big issue when your ev can only get 250 miles of range max meaning 200 and 230 so that's a big issue. So 10 goes from Phoenix, San Bernardino, all the way to LA. It's a pretty common route. And there's a lot of gas stations, but, and there's some charging stations, but they're not super available or super close to each other. If I did this same route in an EV GTI, I would probably have to charge three times just to get to my destination where with my ice vehicle I fill up once when I start and I could possibly depending on traffic make it to my destination and just fill up at my destination so there's really maybe 10 minutes lost where with an EV if you pull up to the station and a lot of these stations aren't putting out the kilowatts an hour that they're supposed to you're going to be there let's say it's it's marketed. You can go from 0% to 80% on, on a fast charge in 15 minutes. Well, a lot of them, they're not putting out the kilowatts uh, for you to charge that fast. They just don't. So a lot of people are there for 45 minutes to an hour, every single charge. So you're wasting another two and a half hours to three hours of charging time just to get to the same destination. So that's a big issue for me because as of right now, getting, you know, averaging 40 miles per gallon with a modified car that's making close to 400 wheel horsepower right now, very fun, very capable, handles amazingly and light, just everything about it is really good, practical. I mean, <clears throat> this is a very good road trip car. An EV GTI wouldn't be that great of a road trip car because you're you're wasting so much time. You're wasting so much time, and that's a big, 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 big issue to me. Now, for it to be a banger, let's say the GTI, the EV GTI came out, and uh, ooh, I can put it back up on my stand now. The sun's in a different direction.
Okay. Let's say the EV GTI got better uh, range than the 250 that's that's uh, talked about. That's we don't really know, uh, but it's speculated that's what it's going to be because it's a small car. Uh, let's say they came out marketed it at 400 miles. It's still not going to be as good as my current Mark 7 GTI. It's not going to get as many miles out of a uh, full charge than I am getting out of a full tank of gas. But it will be cheaper to charge, number one. So that's a benefit of the EV GTI. But 400 miles would be a great because realistically you're going to probably get like 330 miles out of that, that full charge on a road trip to 350. And I think that's a really good... That's a really good uh, mileage range to where you don't have to be so anxious finding where your next charging station is gonna be, the availability of it. You're not gonna have to charge as many times because now you're going double the amount of miles on without charging compared to, you know, if the, if the car can only go 200 to 230 miles. So that would be excellent, that would be awesome. Dang, I just hit traffic, bummer. Um, but I highly doubt that's going to happen. Uh, but if it does, I think that will be a banger of a win for VW for their first EV GTI. Um, and if the price uh, of getting into an EV GTI is going to be, the starting price is going to be like $37,000. I think if it had a 400 mile advertised or marketed range I think that would be a, a pretty decent price because you're gonna save money uh, from not having to go to the pump uh, but also you got a really cool vehicle that that's capable and, and fun and sporty and gives you that emotional connection um, but I really think it's just gonna depend on the range or at least for me at least for me so range is a big issue for me, um, and it always has been with EVs. It's not just the mark. It's it's not just the the EV GTI. They've always been, you know, issues for me. Let's get back to my last and final gripe that I have for the the new EV GTI, and that is guess. Take a wild guess. Tuning. All right. How are you going to tune an EV GTI to make it as fun as the current ICE ones? How's that going to happen? Someone please tell me. Someone someone please explain that to me. Um, uh, right now, people buy these hot hatches and like tune them right away. I know I did. You want more power out of them. Because the hot hatches have the practicality, the fun, the nimbleness, the lightness, all that fun stuff. And then you tune it and bam, you're like double the amount of horsepower in them. With the EV GTI, if it came out with 250 horsepower, that's what you're going to get. You're not going to get anything more than that. At least I don't think you are. What are you going to have to do? I don't know how you're going to be able to tune that. Like, can you tune batteries for more power? Like, how's that going to happen? So once an EV GTI comes out, that whole market is basically going to be gone. What's going to happen? Are people going to be as enthusiastic about an EV GTI knowing that they're always going to be slower than even like a Mark 6 tuned GTI? I don't know guys I, I really don't know what's gonna happen so that's gonna be a, a, a interesting topic in the future and it's gonna be interesting seeing where the EV GTI is going to stand because as of right now people love them because of their tuning capabilities if you take their tuning capability away how much are people going to love a 35 40, 45, 50, 55,000 dollar EV GTI slash R. Who knows? 
So those are my those are my issues. Um, weight, range, price, and tuning capabilities. So I think the car is great. I think it's a great start. I love the look. I wish the current GTI looked like that. That would be awesome, but it doesn't. So, um, but I love the look. I think it's amazing, and I think it was so good. It was such a good looking car enough for me to actually want to talk about it and make a video about it. So I hope you liked my uh, criticisms about the new EV GTI um, and my opinions on it. Um, tell me how you guys feel. What do you guys feel about it? I think it's a good start. That's just kind of where we're going right now. Uh, but I'm gonna end this video here. Thank you for watching my video. And if you stayed this long, thank you for doing that. Uh, tell me about your opinions on the EV GTI. And uh, I appreciate all your likes, all your dislikes, all your comments, positive or negative. It doesn't matter to me. Everybody has their own opinions. And uh, it's fun to get a little tough sometimes. <laughs> but uh, until then, I will see you on the next video, all right? Peace. Thank mm -hmm. you.